All right, let's move to retirement saving and income planning. I know I've said this already, but don't forget the business. When, when you're doing retirement planning, don't get fixated on just the portfolio and saving and those traditional things. What's the strategy for the business? What's the value? Model that thing as a lump sum or a stream of cash. And of course, don't forget if they do sell it, um, how the tax is going to work on that. Make sure you're using an after-tax number. But it's absolutely vital that, that you do it. And it recognizes, it shows the client that you understand um, the business has value and, and, and what they're trying to do. Now, at the same time, um, if they're more self-employed and it doesn't have any value, um, you know, you may want to make sure you're tempering any optimism for what the value is. Um, although we had a self-employed um, wedding coordinator uh, who retired recently and effectively sold her business for one times revenue. Um, so most business have some sort of value if you get if you get creative about it. Social Security, Medicare. This is another really fun area that you want to get into that as planners, we should be experts on. Most owners are taught to minimize their salary, get an S corp, pay yourself as low a salary as possible to save FICA taxes. So then they walk in their door in your door and they're 60 years old and maybe they never built that big business and they're still kind of self-employed and they have like no social security. I see this all the time. It's actually kind of sad. Um, there is a strategy to maximize those benefits. Make sure you understand what bend points are, the bend points in social security when the percentage of replacement changes. Um, for sure, sometimes that third bend point, which is the last 15% of social security, um, if they paid themselves a really low amount, um, that's, that, that's not the, it's hard to get, maximize that. You really got to pay a lot, but certainly make sure they're getting all that second bend point. Um, replacing zero years later in life or low earning years from when they were a teenager at age 60, there, there's a return on that money when you look at the social security benefit they get if your higher earning years are all packed in towards the end of your career. If you go out and maximize the Social Security earnings, you know, at age 25, uh, I, I dare say you're probably never going to get paid back that money. But if you're if you're really piling it on, you know, in your last couple of years, you do get paid for that. And don't forget about the spouse, especially if you have a non-working or low-wage spouse. That 50% spousal benefit it makes a huge difference. So make sure you're looking at their social security and tweaking that salary uh, if there's an opportunity there. I've done a whole five part series on retirement plans. Make sure you're familiar with the pros and cons of each type of retirement plan. This is pretty basic CFP stuff. So hopefully everybody is, is familiar with that. Um, the last bullet there, employee census data and cash available. Once again, it doesn't do you any good to do the greatest planning. Oh, you should have this 401k with profit sharing, with cash balance and all this. If you don't look at how much cash they have to fund these things or the employee census data, I'm not asking you to be an actuary, but just have a general sense of, hey, my, my client is the youngest person in the company. A cash balance plan may not be the best for him. All right, succession planning. Uh, they can walk away, they can actively work and grow, they can own passively, family transfer, transferred employee, third party purchase. Once again, each one of these is a seminar in and of itself, but just be familiar. I just want to give you a list of some of the options of how, how to do succession planning for a business owner. These are just some of the, the key options uh, that you can use.